in more detail with us is Natasha Devon, founder of the Self Esteem Team, a campaign group that works with teenagers on mental health and body image, and writer and broadcaster and mischief maker, Milo <laughs> Yiannopoulos. Let's see how we get on today. It's great to see you, Natasha. Congratulations on the MBE, by the way. Thank, Thank you. you for taking the time to join us this afternoon. You presumably, oh, I'm sure you welcome the decision. What impact might it have? I think uh, body image, the more I learn about it, the more complicated I realize it is. And things like mannequins and adverts, um, they're, they're symbols, really, I think, more than anything of the pressures that women face. So Topshop's decision is a victory, but it's not going to change. It's not going to change anything significant, I don't think. Why not? because it runs so deep it's in the very fabric of our society and that's why we go into schools and, and work on changing mindsets and giving young people the armor they need to question capitalism because it, it is it's in the very fabric of the world that we live in a mannequin it might shock you out of your revelry and that's certainly what's happened with this campaign but this stuff is all around us all the time well, it's extraordinary, isn't it, to hear about you know the, the fact that, that there's a, apparently a problem with women wor wor worrying about being too thin. That's of course not the problem. The, wor the problem is that everyone's getting too fat. And actually, there's no evidence really that any of this stuff has much of an impact. A lot of the science is very fuzzy on this. It's social science stuff rather than any any real sort of uh, reports or anything. I mean, what. What worries me about all of this kind of stuff is the implication that um, somehow we're going to make people's lives happier or better um, by encouraging them to believe that whatever body shape they are and whatever they look like, they're beautiful and they're going to be happy. That's, evident, that's quite clearly not the case. I mean, if you look at women's, women's happiness has been going down uh, since the Second World War, actually, every decade, but women are getting more miserable as they get told that they can be who they want and look how they like. And, and you can say... I suppose that a woman's uh, self-esteem should have nothing to do with whether or not a man's sexual preference, you know, sort of coincides with how she looks. But the fact is, women are getting more unhappy, and this sort of um, slightly irresponsible trend to sort of encourage people to eat whatever they want and do whatever they want is what's, you know, is one of the things that's fueling an obesity crisis. And that's a really serious thing. That's a real thing. That's something that's got health implications. It's got cost implications for the NHS. The problem isn't too many anorexic women. The problem is quite in the opposite direction. We're perfectly happy to have uh, aspirational role models. Uh, in our entertainment. We should have them too in our retail. There's nothing wrong with encouraging people to live healthily. There's so much wrong with what you just said. First of all, the message is not eat whatever you want, sit on your sofa and eat lard all day. The message is live a healthy lifestyle and then see how your body ends up. There's quite a wide spectrum within which the human body can exist and be healthy. Human beings come in lots of different shapes and sizes and that should be reflected in retail because after all it's us that's spending our money on those clothes. There's also evidence to show that our thin worshipping culture is actually what's fueling the obesity crisis, that it makes people feel shameful it makes people eat more it makes people feel excluded from the world of health i was recently in copenhagen a place where they are obsessed with health in a very positive way and the mannequins i noticed were a little larger so why not allow people the freedom to see themselves reflected in shop windows um i don't think that anybody's complaining about uh you know having realistic types if if they want them in certain places the problem is when you start sort of bullying retailers into getting rid of aspirational body types making clothes look worse in the window i mean you know, if you look when, when a woman goes shopping, for example, she quite often looks at uh, clothes that are a smaller size than she'll actually wear because want she wants to know how that garment's actually going to look. These sorts of aspirational... Um... Not sure that's true, but go on. Well, I, mean, I love women... how we're being told what women look for well, when they again, go shopping. Well, this is obviously from the sort of mansplaining school of feminism, which, of course, also hates capitalism, as we heard earlier. And there's always... You know, what I really don't like about this debate is it's a sort of women-on-women -women kind of violence. This isn't really about whether sort of heteropatriarchal, capitalistic sort of... Uh, uh, superstructure or weird atmosphere that is encouraging women to have unhealthy attitudes towards their bodies. What this is really about, unfortunately, very often, is older women who aren't very happy taking out their frustration on younger women and on youth culture. And if you look, unfortunately, at a lot of the activists who do this, the people who make the complaints, the journalists, the media figures who are doing this, very often they are older, very often they are single, very often they are taking out you know, their frustrations in their own personal lives on brands that are aimed at 22-year-old girls who, do, who are much closer to the sorts of body shapes that we see in the windows. You're taking out your frustration on the youth of today. Well, I've, I've been completely misrepresented, which of course is when you're losing an argument it's the easiest thing to do isn't it to try and put me in a box where I'm suddenly a militant feminist I am a former model I've worked in the fashion industry I know that it's run mainly by women and homosexual men and so 
the patriarchy really doesn't have that much of an impact in that sphere. Um, also, you know, it's when I w go shopping, what I want to know is what the garment will look like on me, not on a six foot one uh, dummy with a 26 inch waist. If you cannot design for a realistic body shape, then you're not a very good designer. If you can only design for a coat hanger, you're creating art, not a garment that's designed for a human body. I'm not sure where this sort of obsession with realism and realistic proportions has come from. I mean, you can, there, there are blogs, there are feminist blogs out there that show, you know, video game characters in more realistic proportions. They turn uh, uh, Lara Croft into this sort of dumpy, lesbianic, uh, you know, short woman in cargo pants. And nobody really wants to see that. Nobody wants, not even women. It's not an aspirational uh, our sort of icon that people can aspire to be like. The fact is, we, have, we do have a huge problem with people treating their own health very irresponsibly. And I personally find when, when media figures and feminists and, and activists and campaigners encourage women to worship themselves no matter what their size and what their shape, actually that just has the effect of making women unhappy. And women have been getting more unhappy decade after decade after decade since the Second World War, since this stuff started to happen. OK, we're, being, we're debating. We're not being offensive, <laughs> are we? No. Mm. So what would you I'm say? I'm talking about science. I mean, OK. Yeah. I would like to see diversity on the high street because I don't want to see naturally slender women excluded from the world of fashion either. You take any one beauty paradigm, you take a size 16 mannequin, you take a size 0 mannequin and present that as the only way to be beautiful. Both of those are problematic. I want to see lots of different shapes, sizes, ages and races on the high street. And I think, I, I disagree, I think that will lead to greater happiness for women. That's not really true, is it? I mean, people don't want to see diversity. They always seem to want to see larger models and larger mannequins. I mean, the, the direction, the trajectory trajectory of pressure from Surely they activists want to be on able your... to see what clothes will look like before they try them on. And well, they can, do, they can see what they'll look shape. like on them by trying them on. Yeah. I mean, designers put clothes on skinny women because it looks better, because that's what people like because to look they, at. Both women and men prefer women. to look at that. I mean, the, the fact is, you know, again, this is not really about men at all. This is about pressures that women put on other women, um, you know, to, to look good and to stay thin and to stay healthy. And frankly, those women who do aspire to look like what, you know, um, you may think are sort of stereotypical standards of beauty or unattainable sort of beauty standards. Women who do look like that tend to be happier. They tend to have better success in relationships and they tend to report that they're more content with life. When I said you know, women are getting more unhappier every decade, I'm not just pulling that out of my behind. Um, women these days report, as, as compared to even 50 years ago, they're far more depressed. They're far more likely to report themselves as generally unhappy with life. They're far more likely to be single and they're far more likely to contemplate suicide. And a lot of this has got to do with the fact that after 30, women do struggle to be happy if they're not in relationships. And part of the reason that many women are not in relationships is you've got these weird celebrities like Lena Dunham who put sort of, you know, being quivering and blobby and unpleasant as a sort of virtue on our screens, encouraging women to turn themselves into quite unattractive, you know, sort of spectacles. I don't think that's particularly healthy for anybody, but the, 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 ultimately it doesn't really affect men. It certainly doesn't affect me as a homosexual. It just affects women because it's, you're making women unhappy. Final thought. It, the final thought is that what we should find aspirational is health. You can't look at somebody and ascertain how healthy they are. Health is about lifestyle, not looks. So I want to encourage people to celebrate their bodies because people who like their bodies look after them. It's the same as with a car. If you had a lovely, shiny new car, you would clean it regularly, you'd put the right fuel into it. Yeah, people so who, not, hate so people who hate their bodies don't look after People them. who hate their bodies look for uh, affirmation, self-help, uh, you know, sort of motivational speaking of the kind that you, you, know, that you do because they want to feel good about how they look no matter what their size or shape. People who feel okay, good come, about their bodies go to the gym. Come back on that. Well, I go to the gym and I'm not single. I've been, I'm in a long-term relationship. I think that you, you've stereotyped women who want to see diversity because it makes you feel better. But it's always to think that in one we're direction, isn't it? And, I mean, we're all bitter and, and, and militant. I want to see diversity. I want to celebrate women. I love women. I love fashion. And I want to see um, everybody invited to the fashion party. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Do you love women? Of course. Great. Good to see you both. Thank you very much for joining us here.